All right, GQ. GQ, hit it. All right, uh, uh, roll them. How you doing, everybody? <laughs> um, I'm here at Charlie's. I have a set of Edelbrock ported heads. Uh, they were CNC ported. I had them done a long time ago. But I never had them flow tested just to see how they actually flow. I like to know the flow curve. I don't care what they list. Everybody lists a higher CFM than what they really actually flow. I don't care who is whose head you have. It, 99 out of 100, it flows less. But come check out my head. This is an Edelbrock head. The ports were, uh, the, sorry, the deck was milled, and then the chambers were opened up a little bit for a 208 and a 16. And here are our valves. You can see we got a interesting, nice spread. It really, there. it really, it really did a pretty on. good job on on our liquid. Yeah, she went on both sides, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's now one of the coolest things about this head is that the uh, did some mimicking of the W2. Charlie, pull out a little bit, move by my finger. Oh yeah, yeah. This is where the original push rod hole went. They filled it in. And then they drilled to the side, and so it looks like they know. put a, an aluminum plug in there. Yes, and it goes from one side to the other. Gotcha! Oh, that's pretty cool. So, so it needs an offset rocker. It does. I have them. So we'll have to we'll have to take a look at those. Okay. And now we can get in, and now you can see a nice, large, wide, open port. No push rod intrusion. Let's, put, let's get a little uh, light in there. Go ahead, Rob. Okay. Uh, as I was saying just two seconds ago, over here you would normally find the push rod pinch intruding in on that port. Mm -hmm. And while it's not the biggest thing that's inhibiting airflow, every little bit of helps. So every little bit is what they did. You know, I did notice that on, on the flow bench because when I took the air speeds, I'm like, there's no pinch on these really. So I mean I put the pito right in the area that the pinch would be. But when we take a look at the airspeeds, you'll be able to see the difference that that opened up pinch makes. All right, looking down, it looks pretty darn good. And we got a lot of, since it's all shiny, it looks like we've got blue everywhere. But in reality, we only have blue on that, the back of the chamber. Everything else is a reflection, but it does look, it looks like there's blue everywhere. Kind of cool. Okay, a little bit different view. You can see the CNC lines. You can see the the crossover where the 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 cutter comes in from one direction, and then goes comes in from the other direction. There's always a little overlap there. Not bad though. It's got a good shape. It does have a little blue on the other side of the guide, which I like. Overall, it did it did a pretty good job with the, our liquid flow. I'm pretty happy with the liquid flow. And uh, it has a little bit of a bulge by the bolt boss, but not too bad. You can see you can see where it bulges in a little bit. Okay, one thing I did note to Rob was that the short side radius was a little low on these. And uh, you have anything to say about that, Rob? No. That I can the uh, uh, basic reputation the guys are talking about okay. on the forums that. This company took the short side radius a bit too low. And they, they did that to get the higher lift flow, no doubt. But it's still pretty good in the mid-range. Uh, you can see the valve job. Looks pretty good. They did do some sand roll blending on the intake, which looks pretty good. Overall, he did a nice job on this. Some quick calculations to do our throats. 87.8 on our exhaust, 90.2 on the intake. The intake is a 208, the exhaust is a 1.6. Let's take a look inside that exhaust port. Okay, you can see there was some hand uh, blending action. Got a little bit of rust on our valve seat, but that's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything. He's got nice uh, transition from the valve seat to the chamber, which he did by hand. I do like the way the liquid came out and hit the chamber and then splattered across the plug. The plug is a little bit short. We should have used a longer plug, but that's the first one I found that had a, a gasket. Okay, the exhaust port is noticeably bigger than like the Magnum exhaust port and it does flow more 
I probably would have liked to seen it raised a little bit more because the floor is a little on the dead side, but it's it's a very functioning uh, exhaust. I think I guessed that it would flow about 200. I was off by a few CFM. Okay, a little bit different view. Flip it over. I probably would have made it a little bit wider across the top of the bowl. But the air speeds are pretty good on this exhaust board. It's fairly efficient. It is interesting he uses a back cut on the exhaust valve. That's you know, depending upon the, the, the design, you can get a little bit too much uh, reversion through that. So I prefer usually just to keep a, a 45 on the exhaust and be done with it. Okay, the back cut on the intake valve looks good. And we've got, it, you know, like Rob said, we got a nice pattern around, around the, uh, the valve. It looks good. Okay, the short side radius got some hand work. A little bit different than I do it, but pretty functional. This is a pretty cool view. You can see where it coming right out of the bowl and hits that chamber. That's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> Alright, this is what we got, guys. Fairly decent down low. 300, we got 215.9. It is a 208 valve. And it's a 225cc port, so that's pretty good. I don't have a problem with that at all. We did have we did have noise though. We had noise right in the mid range, which I wasn't thrilled about. Okay, so a couple of these are a little bit lower than they should be, but they really start to take off after 500. I wasn't really expecting over over 300. I think I said uh, I think my estimate, just looking at them, was 285 CFM. So they did better than I thought they would, just by taking a quick look at them. Your swirl curve, a little stronger down below than it really needs to be. And then it has this noise. You can see the swirl completely drops out. And then it loses it over the short side around 500. And the swirl goes nuts. But if you're going to run a 500 plus cam, that works. That swirl curve works. Okay, like... Uh, Rob was saying 400, probably 415 cubes, something like that. Absolutely. That, that would make yeah. a. Yeah, 414 or better. 426 cubes on a small block, 440 if you can make them. This head is really the size that you're not exactly going to stick a small cam and run, you know, 13s or 12s with. This is designed for much more action. This is a pretty serious street piece if you're going to put it on a street engine. Yeah, you put this on the street, you should definitely feed it cubic inches and camshaft, without a doubt. And a decent intake. I wouldn't put a dual plane on this. No way. No, no, no. That, that, I know people that have, but hey, no, you know, whatever no. makes you happy. No. I think it's even a silly. single, even a single plane will choke it quite a bit. Yeah, you, uh, you, you should really have a top-notch single plane on on here, at least a Victor. Yeah. I will try it with a ported M1 single plane and a thermoquad because I just like to play around. But at least a Victor at the minimum ported, a Super Victor ported, or a Tunnel Ram, or an Indy single plane. That's what really deserves to be on top of this, you know, you know, a head like this. Any head that flows this kind of uh, number is is really not something you're looking for. 20 miles to the gallon and dropping the kids off at school. Although you can, if you want, far be it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'd run it on the street. I have no problem with it. I'd run it on the street too, but, you know, this, is, uh, you know, this isn't exactly a head that you're going to put, two, you know, like, like a 276 rear end and, Trouble. No, you don't you want it. No, you're going to need some gear under it. And yeah. Like you said, cubes, a decent carb. It's going to move some air. Okay, take a look at our exhaust. The only problem I had with it is that it was a little noisy down low. You'll see these these numbers are a bit low, but she picks up. I mean, at 350, it's 163. That's a good number. Okay, I took a quick look at it. I thought it would it would flow about 200. It outdid me by a bit. And it's a big port, so you need to put a 2-inch pipe on it, 219, respectable number. Really not bad. So I'm going to say uh, this was Hughes. He did, a, he did an overall. He did a good job. Now let's take a look at uh, some air speeds. We're a little low on the floor at the pinch. These air speeds are good. But remember, it really doesn't have a pinch. It's kind of opened up. 
We have to show we have to show those rocker arms sure before I forget. And I have to show the bore because I'm stupid. Oh yeah, that I was way. just gonna say, don't forget your bore. All right, the bore looks quite good. Uh, I, I like the way the, I like the way it hits. I like the angle it's got on it. I like that little bit of splatter. Overall, quite good. Okay, where were we? We were on. We went over that. Roof speeds. It, I'd like to see them a little more even, but not bad. A little bit lower than I'd like to see too. I'd like to see them a little faster, but it's okay. And not bad on the short side. All right, a little fast in this corner. I'd like to see them a little more even, but the port works, so I'm not going to worry about it. The exhaust is actually pretty darn good. I mean, if you look by, look by the speeds, right? 300s all across, 314, 320, 323. The top of that port is really working. The bottom of the port, not so much. So if that port were shrank up a little bit, it'd be even more efficient. Which is what I said. I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing that uh, raised up a touch. But it's, it's functional the way it is. It would make a, a hot street engine, definitely. You're on. I'm on. Uh, I wish I can remember exactly how much the offset was on the intake rockers, but because we have the filled in pushrod hole and then moved over, we had to move them over a little bit. HughesEngines.com. Most of you Mopar guys already know it. You look up their rockers. I forget who makes them for them, but these are really nice rockers. These, these are quite sweet. These are 1.6 rockers and get that extra valve lift. Who doesn't like lift on a high flowing head? They have their own, uh, you can get the studs from them and the hold down. So this is a very nice setup. And the shims, everything comes with the rocker arm kit. Um, and you can always order the extra shims when the spaces are normal. So that's about where those It's stand. a nice piece. Yeah. These, I, I, these would think, really nice. I would think they're not cheap. <laughs> I would think they're pretty pricey. Well, according to today's prices... Oh, I can't even imagine what it is today. It's yeah, insane. what I paid for him back in the day was, you know, actually not a bad deal. I don't remember what I paid for him. It was like $400, $450. That's still a bargain. Yeah, That's I mean, it, was a, it was a good price, even for these back then. Now, with the way things are going, they're like double, if not more. I can't, I can't imagine. Yeah. Nice, nice stuff. All right, guys. You got anything to uh, finish up? Thank you out. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Thanks for hanging out.